Did you know right now in New York that as of 2024, the average home price in New York City is 850,000? I couldn't even believe that. And that was from Zillow. But that doesn't mean that all the home prices are that. There are condos, there are co-ops, there are other options that are way less expensive. And unless you're buying the city, because those condos and co-ops out there, it's just a million dollars easily. So it all depends on where you're looking at. This is the average. I'm, just, I'm actually doing the home now that the person is buying it and it's only 700,000. So 850 is not, is the median price, but it doesn't mean that all prices are gonna be there. There's some homes for less than that. It's just an average, but still, that's a lot of money. I ain't gonna hold you. 850, that's a good bit. But New York City is also one of the most, 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 I'm emphasizing the most, competitive real estate markets in the world. Because everyone wants to live here. It's the Mecca. We have fashion, we have food, we have the Knicks. Good or bad. Madison Square Garden. We have the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty. There's no place like New York. So when you live in New York, in Big Apple, it comes with extra stuff. Taxes, money, it happens. Things are more expensive in New York. Let's take a look at the current market right now. In New York City, there's about 30,000 homes for sale in New York City. Prices can vary from 200,000, maybe 150,000 to upwards of millions of dollars. I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I'm just giving you an idea. Now, once again, this information is based off of Zillow.com. And no, I'm not a sponsor. <laughs> But they vary based off many different things. Bedroom counts, um, location, 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 because location matters. In bladder voiding, as in real estate, it's location, location, location. The economy and interest rates can actually impact the real estate. A lot of people don't realize that, but yes, it does make a difference because of supply and demand. So if you ever did um, if you had any economy classes, you know, as there's more supply, so more houses on the market and the demand is lower, then the house prices tend to go down. But right now in New York City, we have way more people looking to buy houses and less houses on the market currently. So because of that fluctuation, the house prices tend to be a lot higher than other places in the country. And it's a lot of demand in New York City. So yes, you can go to Connecticut and find houses cheaper. You can go to um, Detroit and find houses cheaper. You can go to Ohio and find houses cheaper. But that doesn't mean that the house is going to hold the same value as a new house in New York. I believe in Long Island alone, last year houses went up by anywhere from 5 to 15%, something like that. But that's because it's New York City. So this is what you're dealing with when you buy in one of the major cities. Home here, you need to know how much money you should make each year not not once like hey i made this once a year no because when we do your mortgage we're gonna look at make sure you have two year work history so one of the things if you didn't watch my video on how to get pre-approved click right here now we're going to go through the different neighborhoods and i'm going to break down how much the average home prices in that neighborhood is and how much money you should be making to get that and like i said in disclaimer i don't know your personal history i don't know your debt to income i don't know your student loans i don't know any of that stuff just give them overall numbers all right this is just so you have an idea of what you'll be looking for and getting yourself into all right so we're going to start with the most expensive house it's going to be manhattan the most expensive the average house prices here even shocked me i, I was reading this like wow the average house price in manhattan is 1.5 million dollars I think I might just have to start only doing loans in Manhattan because that's insane. 1.5 is the average. This plays a lot of different things play in the numbers that I'm about to give you with this house. Because when you do loans, like for example, FHA has what's called loan limits, meaning that after a certain amount, all right, you have to do what's called a jumbo loan. Now, unfortunately for you guys, I do not have the loan limits in front of me but I'm pretty sure this $1.5 million house is going to be over the loan limits depending on how much you put down. So let's just estimate you did 20% um, down, you wanted to go conventional, and you say, hey, I'm gonna just put down 20%. I'm pretty sure that you won't be able to go conventional, but you can go a jumbo product, which is still a conventional product, um, but not the average conventional loan. So it would be considered a jumbo loan, and if you put down 20%, you'd be spending about, I'm gonna put five, I think about 300,000, 
correct me if my math is wrong in the comment section, but you'll be putting down about 300,000. This means you'll need a mortgage for $1.2 million. And to make sure you can actually afford that now, you'll be needing to make around $250,000 a year. Now, that doesn't mean one person. One person can be at one fifty, and the other person can be at 100000 Together, you guys can make two hundred fifty. Do you see how that works? So when you're doing a mortgage, you have more than one person that's allowed to be in a loan. You could even do up to four people if you want. So 50, 50, 100, and then the other, whatever it is, the other 50 or whatever. Get what I'm saying? So it could be a team effort. It doesn't have to be one person, but altogether the income needed is about $250,000 a year. Now, most of the popular places in Manhattan are going to be like the Upper East Side and Greenwich Village. Now, next up, second most, Brooklyn. Bro I was looking for a dance move and it just didn't work. Brooklyn is the second most expensive borough. The average home price there is around $800,000. Now, this one you can definitely do with a conventional or FHA. You don't need a jumbo loan for $800,000. Now, with FHA, you don't have to put down 20%. Remember that. You guys can get away with putting down 35 And conventional also has a new ruling that um, if it's a two-family, you're allowed to put down 5%. So you have options with this, but let's just say for scenario purposes, you put down 20%, 20% of 800,000, 10% is 80. So it's going to be 160,000 for 160,000 down. You'll, you'll need about, uh, 640,000 for your mortgage. Sorry. So your mortgage will be about $640,000 to afford this. You'll need a roughly about 125, 135 in between there. And like I said, again, this is, doesn't have to just be you as it can be multiple people. And this is a single family. So if you did a two family, right, house hacking, um, we can actually you can do less income because we can increase your income. Because remember, if you're doing a two family, that second unit that you're not living in, we can give you what's called rental assistance to boost up your income. So let's say you made 110, 115. And we did the math and we're like, oh, if we take the rental income in Brooklyn, the rent's probably like three, four thousand dollars times that by 12. We can divide that by 75 because we can only claim 75 percent of that income and we can now push you up by another 20, 30 thousand dollars. So it doesn't have to be all the income that you generate now, depending if you're willing to buy two, three unit, four unit. The more units, the more we can increase your income. But that also means the house price is going to probably be more than eight hundred thousand. If you find a four unit for 800,000, you better jump on that because that's an amazing day. Most of the most popular places in Brooklyn right now are Williamsburg, Park Slope. Um, you do have some people looking at Bed-Stuy and um, it's not, I think that's about it. But Brooklyn itself is really hot. It's trendy. Um, people are moving there. Cannot forget about number three on the list is Queens. Queens is vibrant for food, especially. Um, Brooklyn is still very vibrant for food too, but Queens is coming in. We're coming at number three. Um, I've been in Queens almost all my life, so I'm a feel for Queens. That's that's my home. But moving on to Queens, where the average home price is six hundred fifty thousand. I'm a little concerned. I think it's a little higher. I want to say it's closer to seventy thousand. But once again, this statistics isn't mine. I just pulled it up from Google. That means for a six hundred fifty thousand dollar house, your down payment at 20% would be about 130. Now remember, this is if you're putting down 20%. You do not need to put down 20%. In my last video, the six lies that you've been told, I told you guys that 20% is a myth. You do not need that to buy a home. So let's say you did put down 20%, that'd be 130,000 and your mortgage would have to be about $520,000. So the mortgage is always going to be less because you're putting down the money on your down payment. Does that make sense? So even if the house is 650, once you minus the 130 from it, now your mortgage balance is 520,000. That doesn't mean your house isn't worth 650,000 or even more than that. It's just the money, the amount that the bank is actually loaning to you. A lot of times people get that confused. Like, Hey, Malcolm, I thought my house was worth 650. Why is my mortgage only 520? No, that's what's left after your down payment. All right. And think of the down payment, not as money that you're giving the bank, but money you're putting into the house as equity. Now to comfortably, comfortably, 
afford a house about this much, you should be making about a hundred and ten hundred and fifteen thousand comfortably. So that means you're still gonna be able to go on vacations, you're still gonna be able to do things. Um, you'll still have a little money left over, and these are to keep your DTIs very low. So you have a front end and a back end. Um, front end is just your mortgage versus your income, and the back end is your mortgage and all your other debt. And that's why you hear loan officers say DTI, DTI. What is your debt to income ratio? What is your debt to in income ratio? Based off FHA federal guidelines and conventional federal guidelines, we have certain ratios that we cannot go past, or your loan will be denied. So these are things that we're looking at a lot. So for Staten Island, um, you're going to need about income between 70 to about $75,000. Now, nice neighborhoods or neighborhoods that I think will look good, personal opinion, and some of it from Zillow. I just Google some stuff. And the most popular ones I saw was George and Great. Next, we have the Bronx. Now. I'm not the biggest fan of the Bronx. I'll be honest with you, call it bias. I, I don't know if coming from Queens, we just don't go to the Bronx a lot, but it's number four on the list. And the average home in the Bronx is about 500,000, which I don't feel like that's bad. That's pretty affordable, 500,000. Um, I think in most countries, well, most cities, 500,000 isn't too bad. So at $500,000 at 20% down, which remember you don't have to put down is $100,000. This also doesn't include your closing costs and other stuff like that. Now, if you put down $100,000, your mortgage, remember I told you the difference is going to be about 400,000. For this, you'll need to be making about 85, 90,000. In between there, um, some nice spots to look at in the Bronx is Riverdale, and Pelham Bay. Now, I don't know the Bronx much, so don't come at me in the video like, oh, you don't know the Bronx, there's other areas. I don't know the Bronx much. Kills? Now, bonus, 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 Long Island. The average home price here is a whopping 600,000. Now, in Long Island, the taxes are more, so take that with a grain of salt, but you also get, in my personal opinion, I think you get more land for your money. And it's not really my opinion. It's a fact you do get a lot more land versus the boroughs because the boroughs are more tightly squished. I don't even like saying that, but you're most tightly knit. The houses are like right there. But in Long Island, you get more spaces. It's more land. So you do get more land in Suffolk. You get even way more land than that Nassau County. Um, so if you put down 20%, that's going to cost you 120000 And your mortgage will be about $480,000. And to afford a home here, you need to earn around 100, 110 in between there. And that's for a house at 600,000. Now, there's many lovely areas on Long Island. It's very quiet and you're going to get not as diverse as the boroughs. It's, I live here. It's not as diverse, but you do find pockets of areas that are pretty diverse. But in the boroughs, there's way more diversity. So if that's something that you want, you Go to Queens, or if you want more space, more land, uh, and less noise. I have to stress that it's so much quieter on Long Island. If I stop talking, you probably hear the crickets behind me because the crickets are outside day in, day out. Um, takes some getting used to. I remember the first time I actually moved in, I was so confused because I wasn't hearing no honking, honking, <laughs> no car. <laughs> People talking, playing basketball, like you don't hear any of that. It's quiet. It gets very quiet. And corner stores close at like six o'clock. Horrible. But the space, the quietness, sometimes it's worth it. The peace and quiet was worth it to me. So now that you know the average home prices, let's talk about some extra cost of buying a home in New York City. Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. Now I got to give you a little extra. So first thing first, there's property taxes. They can vary from borough to borough. Make sure you check with your loan officer to make sure they know what area you're looking at because each borough has different taxes and each house actually has different taxes. So if you're looking at Long Island, taxes are going to start at like, I want to say 10,000. I usually start my pre-approvals for and the boroughs, you might get five or six and each home has different taxes too. So Doing your search and sending your home to your loan officer will make their job easier because they want to make sure you're pre-approved for the house that you fall in love with versus you're looking at the boroughs, then you go to Long Island, like, hey, my pre-approval says 600000 Malcolm. Why are you saying that I'm not approved for it? Because the taxes are completely different 
depending on where you look at. Then after you worry about taxes, you still have more. You have what's called homeowner's insurance, which can usually cost you about $1,200 a year. So this is an additional cost on top of your mortgage. Now, if you do what's called the escrow payment, mortgage, interest, and principal are in it. You have homeowner's insurance are in it and your taxes. So if your loan officer is like me, when I give you your payment, it includes all those three things. So you don't have to worry. Well, technically four, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. All of that will be in that one payment. But some loan officers, they give you different payments so you can see a breakdown and you can understand it. Um, I still send that, but I just give you that one number so you don't have to like, oh my God, I still have more stuff to pay with. No, once you get that number, you're good. Don't worry about anything else. But ask your loan officer before you assume that they did that because you don't want to get caught out there when you're thinking that, oh, he did everything like Malcolm does. And then he goes, no, I didn't do that. And then you're like, oh, my God, I owe more money. Now, you need to remember, if you're looking at a condo or co-op, you have what's called HOA fees. These are extra fees that you're going to have to pay the management for upkeeping and different things like that. Now, these vary on different properties, but these are things that could be attached. So you have to double check and ask. Now, if you didn't know from all of this talking that I did, the most important thing to do is to get pre-approved from a reputable lender, a licensed loan officer like me, because we do all these things for you. We crunch your numbers. We let you know, hey, this is what you're pre-approved for. This is what areas you can start looking at, and we help you. Do not start the home search before getting pre-approved. I cannot stress this enough, and I'll keep stressing in every video. I hope this video is giving you a little insight into buying a into not just the home buying process a little bit, but mostly about the income that you need. And you understand that, hey, you're not buying this by yourself. You have a team of people who are willing to help. You can bring us another person, your co-borrower, your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your cousin, your uncle, your brother. You can bring us that and we'll look at the income. We'll divide, devise a plan and make sure you guys get pre-approved. We'll help you do everything. My team and I is like, we're crazy. Whereas we're really good at what we do. We come up with a financial plan to help you. It's not just about making sure you close tomorrow. No, if it takes a year, we'll come up with a budget plan. We'll help you tell you how to pay off your debt, help you fix your credit. We do everything we can to make sure you get pre-approved. I hope you appreciate this. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you have any comments or suggestions on things I should do the video, make it better, new topics you want, just put it in the comment section. Please share this video with a friend or family. Make sure you like and subscribe. Over and out.